USATF, there's some other open meet, right? And you go 2045. At this point, I'm assuming um, you were trying to chase the Olympic standard, right? Yeah. So 2013, you hit a PR of 19, but you had been kind of averaging, it looks like in the 17 meter range. And then boom, you hit the nice, you hit the big jump. Talk about that. That's always the, that's always a really great moment when you're kind of like hitting and hitting and all of a sudden it's not just a PR, it's a pretty significant, it's like a meter and a half PR. Yeah. So um, it was kind of a rough outdoor season up to that point. And I think it happens to everybody like every year, it doesn't matter your um, talent level, where you transition from the big plastic ball and the wooden rings to right. the metal, all that, all that stuff. So this was the first time I'd seen that as a collegiate athlete or, you know, throwing the 16 pounder. It actually kind of just clicked right now, but um, cause I'm doing it right now with the, you know, with my season. But anyway, um, so that transition was a little bit jarring compared to like doing it with the glide um, as a high schooler. So if you look at indoors, I was still, I was throwing 18s and stuff like that. And I had 61, eight or so be my season best, like 18, 66. But then that transition outdoor was harder than I imagined. Um, but it was after the big 10 meet where I didn't make the final, but I was watching some of the discus guys. So we had Dan block from Wisconsin and Chad Wright from Nebraska. And these guys were bigger guys, you know, um, and they were discus throwers, but they also threw shot put. Right. And in order to hold themselves in the ring, they use more wrap than a lot of us shot putters would do transitioning from that eight foot ring to the seven foot ring. So I, and I mean, coach McBride had mentioned separation the past two years, but I had never seen it to that degree, especially mm -hmm. at a championship meet where I'm trying to do my best to score. So I kind of, took that and like dove in head first at practices like trying to use more and more rap okay and I think it was like a couple weeks span from conference to the regional meet where I put the rap into where I can use it and be powerful on my strike and all of a sudden I started training at 18 again okay. then every throw was like 60 feet and all that was coming up was regionals so open up with like 1866 and then 1876 and then the 1905 and that was the big difference for me it's like I was even when I was throwing indoors I was pretty stiff because I couldn't understand what I was supposed to do um and then when I saw some of the bigger guys really use that rap gotcha uh, put it into play yeah and and so yeah I I had kind of brushed over it you, you had a you had a really good indoor season and then obviously outdoor was the rougher transition. Like, what do you do yeah. when you've been throwing 60 feet and all of a sudden you throw, you know, 1685. So now you're throwing 54 feet. Mm -hmm. Right. And then how do you, what do you do? And that was one of my questions that I had lined up for most of the throwers, you know, when you hit these roadblocks and this is when you're a younger guy, right? Because now I'm sure you can reflect on, you're older, more experienced, you've competed internationally, you competed at the Worlds, you competed at the Olympics. I mean, you are like one of the premier dudes now. Um, looking back at that, when you're talking to a younger guy or a coach, what do you do? Where's your mindset when you're like, I've been throwing 60 feet, I come up, I'm throwing 54, 55 and change. How, do, you know, that's what I would definitely call, right? You get into a little slump. It's going to happen to every thrower at every point. What do you do to get yourself out of that slump? And what, is you, what do you and your coach do to get out of that slump? Yeah, so that a coach is very valuable, I think, in letting you know that things are okay. Um, but I think a good tool is like, especially now in the age of social media, um, people tend to record more and store more videos and you know things like that. So I think it's a useful tool if you have some of those training videos and stuff. And that's why all the videos I post are just training tools. It's the ones that look the prettiest. I'll post them online. Right. But um, look back at some of those good days and understand that, you know, two weeks ago you were firing. Right. And then now you may not, you're, you're in a slump. Um, understand that your body didn't change very much in that two weeks. 
all that's happening is maybe you're not hitting quite as clean as you've been doing, or you're not executing as well as you've been doing, right. but it's something that physically you still can do. And I think it's easy to say that, but having some of those tools like the, maybe a training log or, mm -hmm. you know, some videos from practice would really help, especially a younger thrower. Now, what do you do from a mental standpoint? You know, your coach helps you through, and then I'll kind of lead this into a little bit about talking a little bit more about kind of your progression. And again, how you and Coach McBride work together, because I think when I was doing my research on you, you, you again, you have this year, you, you have, a, you have, a, you just get progressively better and better and the distances are going up, but then come your senior year, here comes another big jump. And what did you guys change to make that jump? So um, when I started throwing 20, that a lot of that was mental. And it was the idea of, again, we had a conversation, Coach McBride and I, um, about the Olympics coming up that senior year. So that was 2016. And we reassessed everything. So at the time when the shot put on thrown 1940s, 1950 thereabout, in the hammer, I'm at 72 high. And to be an Olympic shot putter, you needed 2050, which is about one meter versus 75 meters in the hammer, right? which, you know, is like, it's two plus meters and it would be easier. It sounds funny, but it would be easier to get one meter um, in the shot put as opposed to several meters in the hammer. Um, so what we did was we just got bigger and stronger and, um, and then we just, we dialed in the mechanics a little bit. So mm -hmm. Um, you, you might be able to see like a bigger sweep out of the back. Um, I really don't have very level shoulders, but more level than in the previous years. And then we emphasize the strike at the end. So a lot of half turns, better half turns. And um, we just, we basically took shot, but I wouldn't say more seriously, but we focused more on that as opposed to focusing more on the hammer. So even as I was throwing the weight, we'd be geared more towards the hammer outdoors and stuff like that. Like that was the premier event we just flip flopped it. So Shapa became a premier event while not um, letting the hammer and weight go completely. Right. So now that year, obviously um, you wind up second at the NCAA championships. You get on a really pretty nice hot streak regionals. You're like 2020, you hit another, which I think at the time was your, you had tied your PR, right? It was 2037 your PR. So then you, your second, you hit that. And then um, you got another like relatively local regional meet. And then it's um, USATF. There's some other open meet, right? And you go 2045. At this point, I'm assuming um, you were trying to chase the Olympic standard, right? Yeah. And you fell what? It was five centimeters short that year? Yep, exactly. Five that, centimeters short, yeah. That's got to be really disappointing. <laughs> it was a heartbreaker, you know, just... Yeah, it was, it was tough, but it was one of those things where I gave it everything I had. And um, I'm also, I'm pretty proud of myself with how I, I took everything. So my focus was the shot put, obviously, but I still wanted to throw the weight far. I still wanted to throw the hammer far. Mm -hmm. And especially on the team, I think the kids need to understand that, like, you're playing a part. So you have your personal goals, but at the end of the day, especially if you're on scholarship or anything like that, like you still have to produce for the team. Mm -hmm.